blossom end rot. What is it? Why does it happen? And how can you prevent it? Well, if you've ever grown tomatoes, chances are you've come across blossom end rot. Now you might not know what it is, but you've probably seen it before. So in this video, I'd like to talk about why it happens and how you can stop it from happening in your garden. Now, before we get into the specifics, let's talk about the plants that are most affected by blossom end rot. By now, it's obvious, most members of the nightshade family are totally affected by blossom end rot. So you got your tomatoes, your peppers, and your eggplants. Now, these are the ones where gardeners have the most issues surrounding blossom end rot. Now, another family of vegetables that's highly susceptible would be the squashes. So you got your zucchinis, your pumpkins, you know, your butternut squash, your spaghetti squash, although I've never seen it in spaghetti squash. But yeah, squashes, they can definitely get blossom end rot. So what is blossom end rot? Well, let's first talk about what it isn't. A blossom end rot is not a disease and it's not contagious. You know, I've known many a gardener to walk by their tomato plant, you know, and see a fruit with blossom end rot on it and think, oh no, I've got to get rid of that it's gonna contaminate the rest of my plants. Well, I'll tell you right now, the blossom end rot, it is not happening because of a fungus or bacteria or a disease at all. So blossom end rot, it is a plant's reaction to a deficiency, specifically a deficiency in calcium. Now calcium in plants is used to build the cell walls. And so if the plant can't transport enough calcium to the cell walls of the fruit, you end up with weak, deformed, miscolored cell walls. So, blossom end rot, it's not a disease, it is a reaction by the plant to the deficiency of calcium. So, why do plants have this deficiency in calcium? And there's many different reasons for that. It might not just be that the soil that they're growing in is low in calcium. You know, you can have plants with blossom end rot where the soil is absolutely full of calcium. Now, this deficiency of calcium can happen for a number of reasons, but there's usually three main causes for it. And I'll go through them now. Now, the first cause, and this is the most common, and it's really the most applicable at this time of year, and that's intermittent drought. Now, when you're fruiting plants, periodically dry out, get wet, dry out, get wet, dry out, that is a surefire recipe for them to get blossom end rot. So how is this intermittent drought actually causing blossom end rot? Plants use water to do all of their functions. And one of those functions is transport. Plants will use water to transport nutrients that the roots take from the soil and push them all the way up to the top of the plant. And this makes sense. Because where does blossom end rot occur? Well, it occurs in the place of the plant that's furthest from the roots, at the end of the fruit. And so, Intermittent drought, it is the number one cause of blossom end rot. Even when calcium is abundant in the soil, you let your plants periodically dry out, you could very well get blossom end rot and ruin entire crops. This brings us to our second most common cause of blossom end rot, and that's an actual calcium deficiency within your soil. Now this one is also very common, but it's easily fixed. The fix? Add more calcium to your soil. Now there's many sources of adding calcium to your soil. You know, you can buy specifically powdered calcium that is made for gardens, or you know, in your compost you can have crushed up eggshells, uh, there's bone meal. Some people have even gone as far to crush up antacid tablets and put that into their soil. Hey, if it's a calcium source, it should work. This is a perfect time to mention a previous point that I made in a video about a month ago when I was talking about foliar feeding. Now, there's been studies that say it can take up to two days 
for nutrients that the roots uptake in a plant to reach the apical meristems and probably the ends of the fruit uh, in the plant. And so if you were in a dire calcium deficiency, you know, it might not be enough to amend your soil. And so as you saw in my previous video, this is a perfect application for foliar feeding. Now, if you can get your calcium, you know, I, at this point, I would probably use calcium carbonate. If you can dissolve that into a spray bottle or a backpack sprayer, spray the leaves at night, you can get calcium into that plant within minutes. So if you start seeing blossom end rot on a couple of your tomatoes or peppers or whatever, that is a perfect opportunity to break out the foliar feeding. So your watering schedule is perfect. You wouldn't change a thing. Your soil, full of calcium. You can't add any more calcium to it. Yet you're still getting blossom end rot. How is that possible? Well, it could be possible for two very similar reasons. You know, one, during the fruiting stage of the plant, your soil might be too rich in nitrogen. Nitrogen is great for plant growth. It is great for foliage, and it is great for the plants until they hit the fruiting stage. But when the plants are fruiting, your plant may be growing too fast with too many fruit for there to be enough calcium to go around. And so by growing at this high growth rate at the fruiting stage, you can actually cause a calcium deficiency, even though all your other parameters are perfect. Now, another similar reason is competing nutrients. You know, you have your macronutrients, you know, your NPK, your nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, but you have this secondary level of macronutrients, which is magnesium, sulfur, calcium, and a couple others. And so if you have a soil that's very high in magnesium and very high in sulfur, now because these cations are uptake in the same way by the roots, that calcium can actually be outcompeted by magnesium and sulfur. So that's something to watch out for. And really, it's never a bad idea to get your soil tested, especially if you start seeing symptoms like blossom end rot. Now this video is full of the segues because this is a perfect opportunity to take the time to debunk the myth that you should amend your soils with Epsom salts when you start seeing blossom end rot. Epsom salts will not stop blossom end rot. In fact, it'll do the opposite. It can cause it. Epsom salt is magnesium sulfate, two of the major competing cations with calcium. You know, magnesium is great in plants. It's the center of the chlorophyll molecule. Of course it needs magnesium, but too much of it? And you could actually be causing blossom end rot in soils that normally wouldn't have it. So just something to watch out for when you're trying to amend your soils with certain things during the year. And I amend my soils all the time with magnesium sulfate, but I always try to make sure that my soils are high in calcium and that I don't have periodic drought. So earlier we had a look at aroma plant that had blossom end rot. Now that plant was in an eight foot raised bed with an open bottom that was 16 inches deep, yet it still had blossom end rot. Look at these guys. And these guys have dried out so many times. They're in tiny little four inch pots, yet zero blossom end rot. You know, look at the size of those romas. So, how does that happen? Obviously, they've been going through periodic drought. And most likely, there isn't a lot of calcium inside that little bit of soil. So how are these guys able to avoid blossom end rot? Well, it's simple. It's like we've been talking about. These particular plants haven't outgrown their ability to produce fruit. See, it's not about just having enough calcium in the soil. It's about a balance, you know, that plant out there, I bet you there's tons of calcium in that bed. But in that particular pocket, and it's only that plant that has the blossom end rot, I bet you in that particular pocket, there's so much nitrogen, there's so much magnesium, and there's so much sulfur, that I bet you that plant can't get enough calcium through its roots up the xylem 
to the upper portions of the plant and obviously to the fruit. And so it's not just about having enough calcium. It's about making sure that your soil and your water and all the other variables that go into growing plants are in perfect balance. You know, when you think about it, you know, these tiny little seeds that sprout into these tiny little seedlings, you know, that eventually grow into these massive six foot plants that have all these fruit on it. It's a miracle that that happens, but it does. And these plants are designed to make that happen, but they need the right conditions. And so the next time you see blossom end rot, you know, don't think it's a disease and you gotta take that plant out. I treat blossom end rot like I see a wilting leaf. It is a symptom. It is a symptom that that plant isn't getting what it needs at that particular time of its life cycle. And so it's a good thing. You know, plants give us these indicators of how well they're doing or how well they're not doing. And us as gardeners can use these indicators to change the variables and how we grow them. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you learned a little bit about blossom end rot, you know, why it happens and how you can prevent it. As always, leave some questions or comments down below. Have you experienced blossom end rot in your gardening career? If so, how'd you deal with it? Did it come back? Do you have it all the time? Or are you one of the lucky few that's never seen it before? I'd love to hear about it. You know, click subscribe if you haven't already. For those of you that have, I really do appreciate the support. Thank you. And I'll see you guys next time. Oh, no blossom end rod on these guys. Oh, that's a beauty. Picture perfect.